Time now to talk League of Ireland Premier Division Soccer and uh, joining us once again is uh, our regular co-com of course on the uh, the Harps games that's uh, former Harps captain Mr Declan Boyle. Declan uh, good to see you again. Thanks Ashin. yeah good to see you. Uh, I suppose the big talking point as we speak now this Thursday afternoon is the comments made by Ollie Horgan uh, exclusively on Highland uh, earlier today. Uh, where he has once again questioned the disciplinary of the FEA. He's been hit with a three-match ban, five yellow cards and the sending off against Shamrock Rovers. But what Ollie has come out about is that there needs to be better engagement with uh, w- with officials. And uh, he's had out at the, at the FEA and he has questioned the role of the official now that a manager cannot come and actually question an official about a decision which, which has been been reversed is an irate Ollie Horgan uh, in a right position to do that in your mind, Declan? Yeah, that's a, that's a difficult one. Um, obviously, the history that Ollie has with officials um, going back from his started off in Harps, it wouldn't be good. I know he's a good working relationship in regards to them off the pitch, and it's just from, for that ninety-five minutes on the pitch, it can be quite volatile and. The fourth official gets, um, I suppose, he gets a, a red ears from, you know, Wally obviously on his case a wee bit. Um, and it's getting to that stage now, I suppose, where maybe he's right in some sense um, in regards to that maybe you can't say anything um, to officials, especially the fourth officials, because they're acting very quickly and they're throwing out yellow cards very swiftly. And um, that's obviously a problem for Ollie because Ollie seems to be um gets into a lot of trouble with with the fourth officials and the referee but yeah listen it's and maybe if that's the case if there is less tolerance um that's been handed out um to the officials maybe that all he needs to change his attitude and and, and say very little on the pitch because for me um i i believe that if you're paying all your attention toward the, the fourth official the referee you're not watching the match yeah, you were there that night that uh, Rob Hennessy sent off uh, Ollie Horgan and you were there when the decision was made and then they reversed it. He has a good case, but Declan. Absolutely. I mean, we were doing live commentary that night, Oshin and Sheriff and Jeremy, and we, we, we actually talked about it on that because on that incident, there was a free, referee blew the free, and he pointed towards a Harps free, which is pointed towards the Shamrock Overs goals. Um, and there was a player received treatment, and after that he changed. It changed um, the direction of the free and gave it to Shamrock Rovers. And then from the resultant free kick, um, Mark McGinley came and disappointedly he dropped one and they, they scored from it. Rory Gaffney scored and put it into an empty net. And that's, I know that was the difference. And, you know, and then there's another free afterwards. So that, that kind of spilled on. There's obviously a wee bit of um, verbals between Ollie and the referee and the fourth officials. And that kind of started it off. And then there's another free given afterwards, which was probably a wee bit questionable as well. And, Ollie got into the year of the fourth official, and then obviously um, Rob Hennessy, the referee, came over and, and gave him a red card. Um, yeah, so I mean, that, you know, one spilled into the other, and then obviously accumulated with Shamrock Rovers scoring a goal there out of the, the free kick. And you can understand the frustration of that one for sure, um, but there has been moments throughout, throughout the season where he's got yellow cards, and he, you know, he just needs to be a bit more disciplined, yeah. and he's going to have to start doing that otherwise. He's going to get more yellow cards and more red cards, and that's what you don't want to see. You need Ollie on the line. He's manager of the club, and you know he needs to be setting a good example to the players in the pitch. Yeah, that that is one side of it, Declan, and and maybe Ollie needs to tone down slightly on on the line. But but Ollie's point is here: there was absolutely no dialogue or no reasoning from the match official afterwards, uh, and given a reason why he went back on his decision. That's what Ollie's sticking point is here. Should yeah. there be more dialogue? Should there be more conversation, communication between match officials and managers after games explaining situations like this when they arise? Yeah, I think I think Ollie's right on that point for sure. Um, you would like sometimes even after the heat of battles on and maybe after, you know, when everybody settles down and uh, everybody goes and gets changed and have the showers, then maybe there's an opportunity when, when people are a bit more calmer to sit down and have that conversation. And I, I think it's important that referees are professional enough to sit there and have a conversation with managers if they're not happy about things and just explain the case. Um, and, you know, just that that's all it is because, you know, as managers, you can make mistakes on the line. You can say things you don't, you don't mean to say in the heat of battle, but also referees can make mistakes as well on the pitch. And that needs to be sometimes, you know, I, I would love for a referee coming after a and say, sorry, I made a mistake. And then you go, that's okay. That's no problem. We all make mistakes and you just carry on from there, you know? So I do understand the frustration. Um, I think it's probably something that the FBI need to look at and, and the Referee Association needs to look at. Um, I, I do believe that it, 
you know, to, for having a good um, working relationship with the managers in the league, you, you do need to have that conversation with people. Um, or if it's a matter of, of ringing up Bali the next day and explain your case to them and things are settled down a wee bit. I, I would love to see that that conversation being available for our managers just to go and speak um, in a respectful way to the officials um, after maybe after the match is over and, and maybe everybody when everybody's calmed down a wee bit. Yeah, and for the officials probably to, to speak to managers in a, in a respectable uh, way as well, Declan. Right, we're going to park that and, and, and move it aside. Bohemians, this, uh, last week, uh, the performance, particularly in the first half, wasn't good uh, from Finn Harps. Dundalk of the visitors on Friday night to Finn Park. The first thing, Ollie, who won't be on the line tomorrow, well, it'll be Paul Higgity be in charge, but Higgsy and Ollie will be looking for the first thing as a better performance at home. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, after getting a, a really positive result against Derry, then they go up to Daly Mount, and we know it's difficult, and Bows have the players that can't hurt you, for sure, but they've been going through a bad form, similar to Dundalk, Dundalk but uh, you, as you say, like, to lose three goals in the first half up in Daly Mount, disappointing. We just didn't defend well collectively and, and individual errors as well, and that's been the difference. So, so, I mean, Dundalk are the same. They're not going particularly well. Sligo so beat them in Oriel Park, um, last week uh, with a 1-0 victory um, and and even though Slag were down to 10 men for a large portion of the game after Gary Buckley was sent off they didn't really create that much and they have the players that can hurt you um, but at the moment they're they're all they're misfiring and they're just not playing to the level they need to play at so it's an interesting game obviously if Harps can can you know obviously at home they're at home they need to be starting off very well get off to a good start but you cannot give away silly uh, opportunities and defend as poor as you did in Dilly Man if you do that Dundalk will beat you but you know Harps performances have been good uh, sometimes it's difficult because you know you played Friday you played Derry then on a Monday and then you went to Delhi Mount and that's difficult for part-time players you know you're not much rest so you know they, they have a bit more rest they're back into it and their, their home form has been you know the home form has been I suppose good in patches but uh, more more importantly the performances have been good in, in firm part they played really well, very well they're well organized and that's what we're going to have to do tomorrow night and um, if they have to get anything out of the game and if they can score first, I, I suspect them at least to get a draw. Yep. The game goes ahead. Uh, there was, of course, the COVID worry within the Dundalk camp uh, earlier this week when they uh, decided to go off in a team bonding session and, and Belfast. But everything has come back negative, so it's all clear for the match. But that's far from ideal preparation that, that, the, that the Dundalk management would have wanted, Declan. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, there's, I mean there's, there's a lot of things happening up there that haven't been good since the start of the season. And just um just a lack of leadership there's obviously no management structure in, in place um as such um you know so that needs to be addressed as quickly as possible as well um but yeah listen i know you can understand a wee bit what the players are trying to do they're trying to probably to 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 pick a wee bit of team morale and team boost by by doing something as sociable group and going out together but you just can't do it nowadays and then up to obviously belfast and the night out i think a full squad of players minus four players potentially so you're looking at 16 or 18 players i'm guessing those up there so that's a lot um uh, and and the conditions that's, that's, that's happening with covid you know, guidelines and inter-county you know i know that changed in one on monday but this was a sunday so it was a day before so it, it just raises the profile um it highlights deficiencies within what's happening um in dundalk and it just adds extra pressure to the club to the players and I mean, the supporters are not happy. Um, they're due to play Shamrock Rovers next week in Oriel Park, and there's supposed to be a, a supporters are arranging a, a protest there. So that's that just shows you very similar to Man United, where the fans weren't happy. So hopefully it'll not go to that level. But um, there's a lot of unrest in there, um, and the farmers haven't been good in the pitch, and, and that's obviously to the core of, of why people are, are unhappy. Yeah, uh, but this is a game that Harps will think, yeah, we can get something out of. They went, of course, to Oriel Park and, and, and they won. And certainly three points against the Lillywhites, so the former kingpins, we can call them at this stage of, of, of Premier Division football, would be a huge boost as you were to go into games then against the likes of Drogheda, Waterford, and I think Sligo then after that, Declan. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, there's no easy games, Oshin, in, in the league. But, you know, this is a good time to play Dundalk. Um, a really good time. They're not firing. They, they have four or five injuries to key players which you know obviously helps your case in regards to getting three points from them um the performances um haven't been good they've brought in a lot of players this year Oshin, and they just haven't better done and that takes a wee bit of time they've lost a lot of players too um as well and it just it's just been you know, very unsettling for them but 
listen, the perfect time to play them. Um, I think, you know, um, but we're going really well as well. Obviously disappointing against Bose, but at home our performances have been excellent and I'm expecting the same again. And yeah, it's a hard game for, for both clubs, but can we get three points? Absolutely. Um, and more state scenario, let's try to get a draw. But it'd be nice to get three points to bring you into, as you say, the so-called easier games, but if there is such a thing with the draw and whatever coming after that, and and, and especially another home game against Drada as well. So yeah, absolutely. Big, big week. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it should be a good game. Yeah. Derry City are going to Shamrock Rovers on Saturday evening. Six o'clock kickoff at the Tallis Stadium. How much of an ask is it for Derry to get something out of this one, Declan? Yeah, it's a big ask, isn't it? Um, and I thought that, you know, they scored late on, obviously, against Longford and disappointing 1-1 one, one draw. And, and you're expecting them to turn them over after the two positive results they had against Derry at Sligo Rovers and Bowes away. So... Um, yeah, listen, so they need to do something, obviously, but it's a big ask. I, I Shamrock Grovers, who are not, they're they're playing well without being really pen, penetrating too much. They're not scoring a lot of goals, but they're scoring late goals. They scored another late one um, at the weekend against St. Pat's. Uh, Danny Mandrew scored a late goal, uh, good uh, good solo run down the right-hand side, and he stuck it in, behind the, uh, in the lower and below the keeper's legs. And, yeah, so they, they've done that four or five times, so they just they just know how to win games. Um I don't expect to see anything different. I know that obviously um, Rory will probably set them up to have a low block and to be hard to play against. And, and um, with the, um, but I, I just think they've just shown over to too much quality, um, and I expect them to to beat um, Derry City, but probably might be close enough two 0 or one 0 Just a note on a young Donny Gallman that signed a, a lengthy contract in League of Ireland terms. With Derry this week, he celebrated his 20th birthday uh, by putting pen to paper on a new deal. That's young Ronan Boyce uh, from, from, from Remelton. Obviously, Derry think a lot of this young man, so they do with, uh, with the length of the contract they've given him, Declan. Yeah, and he's done really well and he deserves that. Um, you know, we've seen, I've seen him in, in obviously the live games um, in the Brandywell and he doesn't, he just fitted in there like a glove and it looks as if he's been playing for a long time. Um, very comfortable in the right back position, obviously scored a goal as well um against waterford i think it was um, um so it's been done done really well and, and the club have put faith in youth this year and they're giving young lads an opportunity and this is a prime example and they've rewarded ronan with a long-term contract three and a half years which doesn't happen too often in the league of ireland and it's great to see the club committing um and giving the young players that opportunity and you know that's a long-term career hopefully for him with Derry city and, and uh, we wish him well and he deserves um that long-term contract the other games this weekend, Drogheda against uh, St. Patrick's Athletic, Longford Town against Bohemians. Sligo's match with Waterford has been called off due to the ongoing COVID situation uh, in Waterford. They played their 19s last week and they got a bit of a hammering. Mark Bircham, former first-team coach with uh, Ian Holloway, wasn't it, at, at Queen's Park Rangers, is in charge now at, at Waterford. Bircham's got a big job down there in Waterford if, if he's going to turn things around because it's a bit all over the place at the minute at the RSC, Declan. It is, and you know, if, if you look back at it, when Kevin Sheedy was there as manager, and there were there were rumours that they were sacked, and Mike Newell was there, and they were then they were reinstated again, and it's just been a difficult time. Obviously, they're trying to get a wee bit of normality back in, and they've announced um, obviously Mark Bertram to come in um, very quickly after after uh, two manager manager uh, left the last time. So um, yeah, and then the COVID kicked in the middle of that, so they played the 19 squad against Drada and we're we're we're, we're um, comfortably beaten by the by Drada on the day it was six nil was it and so difficult one because the 19s are just back training and now if it was you know two or three months later where they're a wee bit fitter so you're asking 19s to step in to play against first team players that are who are, who are not fully fit um so it's a big ask for them and you could potentially understand why whatever it have with withdrawn from this game and, and have given three um, points and a 3 0 victory to Sligo Rovers. Um, that were obviously it was three big points for them, but and obviously they'll have all their players back for their next match. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's an interesting one to see, but yeah, you're right. What a job he has to do because, um, they have you know they're down near the bottom, obviously, they haven't got too many points. They, they have the players, they were improving, and they're a very young squad, but uh, they probably need a wee bit more. And I would say he'd be looking to maybe add a few players. With a wee bit of experience um, to that squad in, in July when the transfer window opens, and, and that'll probably be what he's wishing for, and, and maybe players from 
from England across to to obviously add a wee bit of experience and maybe a bit more more technical ability in the top half of the pitch because they're not scored many goals. Yeah, just finally in the Declan Sligo Rovers under 19s. Uh, you kept it quiet. It was announced this week that you have taken up the the, the managerial role there. Um, back into management, you had a successful period at underage with Fun Harps. You've decided to to take charge of the of the Sligo team now. Tell us about that move, Declan. Yeah, listen. Uh, um, obviously, Brian Dorian, or, as everybody knows him as Dinky, um, he was the under nineteen manager up in Sligo Rovers, and he got a, a new position within the FEI, um, and he'd be working with the young elite players in Donegal. So we wish him well on that one. And Brian's been involved in soccer a long time, so he's got great experience. So, um, and delighted to, to see him get the opportunity. So there was a vacancy, obviously, up there, and and. Um, I was lucky enough to get the job as 19s, and I'm looking forward to it. I've been out of the game now um, two years. Um, so um, I suppose from that perspective, I've got a wee bit of energy back into it, and I'm looking forward to the challenge ahead. The, um, Sligo, um, you know, they have a lot of good structures in place. Um, Lee Buckley has a lot of faith in young players coming through, and they have five young lads that are part of the you know, first team um, since I was manager of Van Harp, so I played against them coming through, and they're established players. So. But given that opportunity, and that, that's key for me in regards to the player development and, and giving young players the opportunity to, to go and play at that level. So it's great to see that pathway. And, and um, yeah, so look, I'm looking forward to the challenge. It suits me as well, actually, because I worked down in Carrigan Shannon, so it suits me traveling through. Um, um, so I just train, train out in the evening time and then go on home to, to, and, to Mancharles. So it's, it suits me. But yeah, listen, I really enjoyed my time at Fun Harps. Uh, I had great memories, obviously. We won the double um, with the under-17s in 2018, which was a great success. Um, but, uh, you know, now it's just something different, and I'm looking forward to the challenge with working with the under-19 team, the Sligo Rovers. Yeah, I know you're just on the door, and you had, what, one or two training sessions at this stage uh, with them, Declan, but what's going to be deemed as success in your managerial role with them? Yeah, well, success for uh, that role, I suppose, up there. I mean, Ch Connor O'Grady is the academy manager up there, and you know, he's full-time, and that's it's great having his experience there as well alongside us. But, uh, yeah, so success for us um, would be that young players are, are getting into the first team, and that's what they're basing. It's not about winning trophies. It's about under-19 players um, and Sligo-based players playing in the first team regularly and, and staying there long-term, and that's what's considered successful, So, which is great, and that's what I'll, I'm on into. I want to, to work with the best players. I want to improve them. Um, I want to come into the first team, but, but I want them to, to have longevity in their career and, and play in League of Ireland for the next 10 or 15 years. Declan, I wish you all the best with your, your new position as Stiger Rovers on the 19 manager. Thanks for joining us once again on the League of Ireland Talk. And we'll have more from you, of course, uh, with uh, Jermot and Colcom on that Dundalk game on Friday night. Thanks, Declan. Thanks, Oshie. Thanks, man, guys.